This module of Chapter 5 on Population, Module 5.4, I will present methods for estimating and or computing the value of the basic population parameters of population growth, birth and death rates, of gross and net reproduction, mean generation time, and stable age distribution. Intrinsic rates, birth, death, and growth. The intrinsic rate of increase is the rate of natural increase in a closed population that has been subject to constant age-specific schedules of fertility and mortality for a long period and that has converged to a stable population. The intrinsic rate is a special case of the crude growth rate that is the ratio of the total number of individuals in a population at two different times will yield its growth rate. The population is stable if this ratio does not change over time. The exact value of R, the intrinsic rate, can be determined from data on survival and reproduction using the Newton's method, a numerical method for finding successively better approximations of a function based on the formula R1, that is the first iteration estimate, equal the initial guess R0 minus the dividend of the Locke equation and its derivative. The expression FR is the original Lotka equation shown here, and F'R is its derivative shown here. Before I get into the steps for computing the exact value of the intrinsic rate of increase, I need to describe the contents of this table, which contains uh, example survival and fecundity of data for Drosophila as well as information on the iterations needed for arriving at the exact value of R. The table contains 11 columns that I explode here. Column 1 contains age uh, in days from 0 to 90. Column 2 is stage with egg, larvae, pupae, and adult stages corresponding to chronological ages. The column 3 is the cohort survival LX. Column 4 contains data for the fecundity, MX, and column 5 contains net fecundity, which is the product of survival, LX, and fecundity, MX. These are the data for which I will show how to compute the value of R in three iterations. Thus, column 6 contains the value of the components of the Locke equation, and column 7 the value of its derivative function, both based on the initial value of r equal 0 0.3. Then the values for the second and third iterations that are needed are contained in columns 8, 9, and 10, and 11. The sum of these respective columns are shown here, and they will be used in the data organization and computations involving five steps. The steps for computing R include the following. Step 1. Enter the basic data, including ages X in column 1, survival in column 3, and age-specific number of offspring per female in column 4. Step 2. Compute the net maternity, that is LXMX. That goes in column 5. Step 3. Estimate an R value as a starting point for progressively closer approximations. For the example, the first guess is our R0 equal 0 0.3. Step 4. Compute for all ages the values for columns 6 and 7 using these formulae. That is, step 5a, determine the first analytical approximation for R, denoted R1, that's the first iteration, using the equation shown here in which the value of 1 minus the sum of column 6 divided by the sum of column 7 is subtracted from R0 to yield R1 equal 0 0.3329. Step 5b, here the value of R2 is computed as the value of R1 from this first iteration we just uh, showed, minus the value of the same computations as before, but using the sums of columns 8 and 9 in the equation. This step yields an estimated value of R as R2 equal 0 0.3460. Step 5c, computations are similar to the first two iterations, except using the sums of columns 10 and 11 to yield a value of R3 equals 0 0.3476.
This is a value that is within three decimal places of the exact value of r equal 0 0.3477, since the adjustment at the third iteration is very small. Although the use of Newton's method, as I just demonstrated, is a standard numerical approach for estimating r from a set of lx and mx data, an ad hoc method for determining the exact value of r from a set of lx and mx schedules is to arrange these schedules in a spreadsheet to include columns by age, then have lx and mx in columns 1, 2, and 3. Then insert an initial guess for the value of r in a cell, see this yellow highlighted cell, and link this value in a fourth column in the product lx, mx, and uh, exponent to the minus r times x. Then adjust by trial and error the r value until the sum of the column 4, that is uh, in yellow here, equals 1.0 to the desired decimal place. Here I present three different analytical formula for estimating the intrinsic rate of increase. This is distinct from the iterative methods I just showed with, for example, the Newton's method. The first is r equal the natural log of the net reproductive rate divided by the mean generation time t. The second formula for an analytical approximation of r is r equals the natural log of the survival probability to the mean generation time, Lt, plus the natural log of the gross reproductive rate, all divided by the mean generation time, T. The third analytical approximation formula is based on uh, the formula with three expressions in the numerator, including the natural log of the total fertility rate, which includes both sexes, plus the natural log of the proportion of female offspring, which is typically 0 0.5, plus the natural log of the probability of survival to the mean generation time, t, all divided by t. Note in all three of these analytical approximation formula that the mean generation time, t, has a direct and inversely proportional effect on r. Thus, increasing t decreases r, and decreasing t increases r. Intrinsic birth and death rates. The intrinsic birth rate b is the per capita birth rate of a population that would be reached in a closed female population subject to fixed age-specific birth and death rates. This is also the per capita birth rate in a stable population. Its counterpart, the intrinsic death rate, D, is the per capita death rate of a population subject to the same conditions. The formula for B and D are shown here with B equal to the inverse of the sum of exponent raised to the uh, minus Rx times Lx, and D equal to 1 minus B. Putting this together, a stable population will grow at the rate R with B births and D deaths for each individual in the population. The intrinsic birth and death rates can be used to express the population growth rate, B minus D. The ratio of B to D, D, that is B over D, equals the birth to death odds. And the population metabolism is B plus D that will provide a measure of overall vital rates. Next I cover net reproductive rate. This is denoted R0 or NRR, and it's defined as the average number of female offspring that would be born to a birth cohort of females during their lifetime if the cohort experienced a fixed pattern of age-specific birth and death rates. The formula for R0 is the sum of LX and MX from the ages of first to last reproduction, alpha and beta. This parameter expresses the per-generation growth rate of the population and is related to the discrete daily growth rate, lambda, as given in the following example. If R0 equal 100 offspring per female and mean generation time is t equal 25 days, then the daily growth rate is a 25th root of 100 or lambda equal 1.2023. Stable age distribution. The stable age distribution is a in a stable population emerges when the birth and death rates are fixed and the distribution of ages in a population are stable. 
Consider a hypothetical stable population with two age classes increasing twofold each day starting at time zero. Suppose further that no mortality occurs from age class zero to age class one. Then the number in age class zero and age class one will always differ by twofold. That is four divided by two, eight divided by four, and 16 divided by eight, as will the total number between two time steps. That is, 6 divided by 3, 12 divided by 6, and 24 divided by 12. Here, the fraction age in age class 0 will always be 2 thirds of the fraction in age class 1, which will be 1 third of the total population number. In other words, the distribution of the number in each age class will be stable. Note that the fraction of the total population in age class 1 is always smaller than the fraction in age class 0 due to growth rate and not, in this case, as a result of mortality. The stable age distribution, acronym SAD, is defined as the schedule of the fractions each age class represents in the stable population. The formula for this fraction, denoted CX, is uh, given by the formula where cx equal exponent raised to the minus rx times lx divided by the sum of this expression over all ages. This relationship for the fraction of individuals age x in a population becomes apparent when the exponential term is dropped and thus the expression becomes lx divided by the sum of lx. Mean generation time. The last parameter I will cover in this module is mean generation time t that is defined in two ways. The first definition is the mean age of reproduction, which characterizes t as the mean interval separating the births of one generation from those of the next. The formula for this definition of t is simply the sum of the product of lx and mx weighted by age divided by the sum of the product of lx and mx which equals the net reproductive rate. A second definition of mean generation time is the time required for a population to increase by a factor equal to the net reproductive rate, R0. In other words, the time for a newborn female to replace herself by R0 fold. The formula for this definition of T is the natural log of R0 divided by the intrinsic rate of increase. This ends Module 5.4 on Population Parameter Estimation and Computation.